people post their crimes on TikTok? Eating free at Walmart. Everyone crying. You should have seen it. Oh good, teach the young kid to steal, that's, that's a good start. And I'm sorry, but what the hell are those dots on that woman's face? Did she lose a fight with a stapler? Take that, and that. She looks like she's about to motion capture a scene from Avatar. But here's the worst part, the stuff they're choosing to eat is bullsh**. You could eat anything for free at a grocery store and you choose like Lunchables and Oreos? That's junk foods. Steal some feta cheese, you know, some fresh cut prosciutto, have some class. I mean, come on, you want to be healthy when you go to prison. continually teaching bad behavior to the young. Over and over again, I show you these videos. The same behaviors are passed down to the young. All right, guys. So once again, we got to talk about woke, soft on crime, Chicago mayor-elect Brandon Johnson, who is doubling and tripling down on his statement that we should not be demonizing the kids who committed acts of violence who rioted throughout the downtown chicago uh who beat people up uh who uh caused a lot of destruction in the city who has caused businesses to literally exodus the city um he says no 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 uh we should not demonize them it is wrong okay it is wrong all we need is more money right we need more money more social workers we need to tax the rich more uh and get a kid something to do that's gonna fix the problem right this is what this guy is saying he came out and gave a speech and that is what his focus is on take a look demonizing children is wrong we have to keep them safe as well that is Mayor-elect Brandon Johnson saying the teenagers who rampaged through downtown last weekend deserve sympathy as much as punishment. He fielded questions after speaking to lawmakers earlier. Our political editor, Mike Flannery, joins us with more. Mike? Natalie and Anthony, while the mayor-elect said he doesn't condone the violent assaults and robberies committed downtown last weekend, he offered no specific plans regarding the threat of renewed violence this spring and summer. He spoke mostly in general terms about troubled youth. They're young. Sometimes they make silly decisions. They do. And so we have to make sure that we are investing to make sure that young people know that they are supported. And we also have to make sure that police officers who put their lives on the line have the resources that they need to keep us safe. Clearance rates. Earlier, the mayor like spoke to a joint session of the Illinois General Assembly, as Lori Lightfoot did four years ago. But where Lightfoot knew little of the inner workings of the state capitol, Johnson once worked for Senate President Don Harmon of Oak Park, embracing him there, and was a lobbyist for the Chicago Teachers Union. He knows a lot about Springfield. The Teachers Union, of course, has long demanded a nurse and social worker at every Chicago public school, a big round of new hiring, and it's a top priority for Johnson. Investing to create 200 more jobs in the Chicago public schools can yield incredible dividends going forward. Mayor Elect Johnson said nothing in public today about his proposed $800 million in Chicago tax increases, uh, a plan that does include, uh, that does require some approval by the General Assembly. He did tell reporters that he's already begun key conversations with lawmakers. I'm political editor Mike. Yeah, so I want y'all to understand, this guy in his priorities, <laughs> okay, uh, he has a crime crisis in his city. You have kids that are destroying the city, okay, you have businesses being robbed out of existence, being robbed out of the city. You have kids that are stupid, <laughs> that don't know anything, and this guy's focus is saying, hey, let's not demonize the kids. Let's feel sorry for them. They're, they're actually the victims here, right? They just don't have enough to do, right? We need to give them more money. We need to give them more money. We need to tax the corporations, okay, who are already struggling to make a profit because these kids and other criminals are robbing them. We need to focus on putting social workers and nurses in every school, which I'm not saying is a bad idea, but <laughs> I'm just saying, like, again, where are your priorities at? While at the same time having no plan whatsoever, no plan whatsoever to deal with the crime. And you have these kids going on social media, these same teenagers that rioted in the streets, going on social media saying, we're going to do this again. 
right? We're going to do this again, maybe this weekend, right? If it don't rain, okay, if it don't rain, we're going to do it again. And the reason why is because this guy is weak. This guy is soft. Just listen to this dude talk. I'm like, bruh, these kids see that and they don't see somebody that's like, oh, this guy's compassionate. He feels bad for us. Let's not riot and loot and commit crimes, <laughs> right? That's not what they're saying. In their head, they're, 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 they're seeing blood in the water. They're like sharks, man. They're like, oh, this guy's soft as hell. We can do whatever we want. It's open season. Everything in this city belongs to us. We can do whatever the hell we want to do because this dude thinks that people should feel bad for us when we commit crimes. We've heard on the news that they have been charged with misdemeanors, and um, it's just really disheartening. A deadly trend with innocent victims. Carjackings are turning into car crashes. One of the most recent incidents left a six-month-old baby dead. Nate Rogers is live with more. Nate. Yeah, that's right. I'm Corey and Don. The victims in this crash, in fact, were a mother and her three children. One of the children um, was um, one of the one of the children was um, an infant, less than six months old. We're told who died as a result. We spoke to an aunt today who described the family's pain as unbearable. Six months old, and now a cherished memory. But he was like six months, going on 26. He was just like the sweetest little boy. We would always dance. Um, he loves to dance. Sunday around 5 p.m., the family inside the silver pickup truck, then struck by the stolen Hyundai Sonata, according to police. The truck then head on into this large tree at Costner in Washington. Truly the biggest nightmare. The car seat still visible in the wreckage. Neighbors rushing to the scene to render aid. Christian Uvidia, his mother, and two older sisters all rushed to the hospital in serious to critical condition. I think a lot of but two, they've kind of blocked out just from the trauma. The six-month-old fought to stay alive for three days. He suffered from uh, a fractured skull, which um, caused his brain to swell and bleed eventually, um, causing him to go into a coma and then later passing away. The offending vehicle crashed into a light pole. Police later arresting a 14 and 17-year-old, both charged with misdemeanors, criminal trespass to a vehicle. The family now in deep pain, working to make funeral arrangements for a kid whose smile and infectious laugh will forever be missed. Your however minutes long joyride ruined our life completely yeah so you had two kids that decided that they wanted to go on a joyride and they stole a vehicle crashed into another vehicle and killed a six-year-old and injured others brandon johnson thinks that well we should be nicer to them right we shouldn't demonize them for their actions they don't have enough to do they're bored we need to give them more money this is sick this is fucked up. It really is. They got slapped on the wrist with misdemeanors. Misdemeanors. Wow. Yes, I know I've done a lot of videos about Chicago, but it's just, it blows my mind what is happening right now. Again, you would think that the crime crisis that is happening across this country, not just in cities like Chicago, we're going to talk about another city here in a little bit, but you would think that that would wake people up and say, hey, you know what, we need to, we need to vote differently. We need something else, right? But that's not what's happening. What's, what's actually happening is that these people are quite literally voting to keep themselves out of jail. They're voting for destruction and chaos because they are the agents of chaos, right? Because again, in Brandon Johnson's case, quite literally the most crime-ridden neighborhoods in Chicago are the neighborhoods. Those are the people that got him elected. It's absolutely insane. This guy has no plan whatsoever to clean up crime. That is the first and only thing I would worry about if I was mayor of Chicago. I'm getting these people off the streets. I'm locking you up. I'm locking criminals up and I'm throwing away the key, right? If I was a mayor, okay? We need a crime bill 2.0, okay? That's what we need. We need a crime bill. But anyways, again, it's not just Chicago that is suffering. We also have another Democrat-run city, historically Democrat-run city, Baltimore, uh, that is also uh, experiencing a upsurge in violence, more so than usual, where you have a woke, young, he just happens to be black, mayor that is more progressive, running the city, another soft on crime guy, 
and you guys should not be surprised by the results. And Mayor Brandon Scott delivers his state of the city address tonight after a violent few days in Baltimore. That's right. In just the past 24 hours, six people were shot in three different shootings. One of the victims died. Four of those people were hurt in a single shooting along North Charles Street in North Baltimore today. Over the weekend, four young people ages 12 to 18 were shot. The 12 year old victim identified as Jalen Richards died. And now we're hearing from one mother who says she pulled her son who knew Jalen out of the city to try to save his life. If people are lying to themselves and it's very possible. I just told you my son had Uzi. I'm not going to lie to the public. This is a crisis right now. Mackenzie Frost spoke with that mother. We'll have her story coming up in a few minutes. Jeff Abel has what the mayor said during a state of the city address tonight. Our team coverage begins with Keith Daniels. Keith joins us live with more in regards to what we know about Jalen Richards and how the community is coming together. Keith. Well, Kai, school officials say Jalen Richards was in the sixth grade. He was a student at Westport Academy Elementary Middle School. And tonight, he's one of the city's youngest homicide victims. At Westport Homes in South Baltimore, recovering from the unthinkable. 12 year old Jalen Richards seen here in this photo from Murder Inc. Baltimore shot and killed. Longtime neighbor known as Miss Cookie in disbelief, saddened for the boy's family. The mother's heart is aching. I'm, I don't even know if she have other children or not. I don't know that. But I know she got to be hurting because I'm a mother. She's hurt. Someone gunned down Jalen at about 9 o'clock Saturday night. It happened on Mizell Court in the apartment complex. Police Commissioner Michael Harrison says they recovered what appears to be assault rifle casings on the ground after the shooting. Investigators are releasing few details about exactly what happened, but the commissioner did say this at the scene. A shooter produced a firearm an assault rifle type, type firearm and began firing, uh, struck this young victim as uh, the victim was running away. At some point, the victim collapsed about a block behind where we are. At Westport today, the group We Our Us, a unity engagement men's movement, steps through the neighborhood as they do across the city on most Mondays. On this night, they're in Jalen's community. Number one, we're bringing them presence of black men. Uh, secondly, we're bringing them unity. We're bringing love, but also we're bringing resources. There may be other individuals in this community that need employment, that need treatment. Jalen's deadly shooting happened in BPD's Southern Police District, where police say 46 homicides and 67 non-fatal shootings happened last year. So far this year, 10 homicides and 16 shootings. Killing, senseless killing. You just don't know why. Neighbors like Miss Cookie looking for accountability. I want to see everybody, everybody step up and do something about it. Not just the mayor and the whatever. Everybody come together. Fox 45 News spoke with members of Maryland's congressional delegation today who tell us they are outraged by the city's youth crime crisis. It's a damn shame that this continues to take place. It's a damn shame that it's out of control. And it's a damn shame that most of us don't have answers to it because it is so complex. In terms of law enforcement, uh, Senator Cardin and I have been working with the Justice Department uh, to get more U.S. attorneys um, to Baltimore uh, and get more ATF officers uh, to Baltimore to address the issue of so many guns uh, on the streets. No, the answer is not complicated. <laughs> it's not complicated. We know what works. We know what works. Locking criminals up is what works. Being tough on crime is what works. More police is what works. Okay? We know what works. We know what works. These Democrats, they it's so complicated. It's only complicated because you don't like locking black folks up. That's it. Because the, the woke scholars, the academics told you that locking up black folks is racist. Therefore, it's complicated when it, it's, it's not complicated. We know what works. Again, we had a crime bill back in the 90s that helped clean all this stuff up. We need that back. We need it back. We need a, another crime bill 2.0.
We need to clean up these cities because, again, these cities were once great. They were once great American cities. They're falling apart right before our eyes. They've been overrun, taken over by criminals, thugs, gangs. And people are losing their lives. People are dying in the street. And where's BLM? Nowhere to be found, right? Nowhere to be found. Nobody gives a damn. Nobody cares. Because the narrative don't fit. Narrative don't fit. Again, man, this is... <laughs> what's happening in these countries, in, in these cities across the country, man? It really is crazy, man. It really is. I, I honestly, I feel bad for the law-abiding citizens there that didn't vote for this. But unfortunately, a lot of them did. And it is what it is. I only can really feel so bad. I just don't like the fact that, again, you have innocent kids, children... You know, people who, who didn't want this job, law-abiding business owners that have to suffer because of the voting habits of criminals and people who don't believe that criminals should be punished. It's a shame. Let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.